Hey, this is Drew from Moon Audio, and welcome back to Audiophile Tech Tips. So like I pondered on Tuesday, we got a lot of questions this weekend at Axpona about, hey, Drew, you've got all these headphones, all these servers, all these DACs, all these headphone amps. What is the most important part of the chain? And where should I spend the most money? What should I think about getting first? At the end of the day, the most important thing is what's producing the sound and what is producing the sound. Either headphones in a headphone setup, speakers in a two-channel or home theater environment. These are the most important pieces of the puzzle. This is where you should spend a good chunk of your money. The second most important, and this is what we sort of uh, brought up to you on, on Tuesday, is um, the, the source material. Where is it coming from? Who's doing the heavy lifting, etc.? And my words of wisdom would be to spend the next amount of cash, the most you can afford, in the digital to analog conversion part of the puzzle. So if we've got a server, a DAC, and a headphone amp, that DAC to me is the next piece of the puzzle to spend your dollars on. Um, now, the next question that, that I got from that was, well, I've always heard it's the source device that's the most important. And you sort of think that the server might be that source device because it's feeding data to the DAC, but really the DAC is sort of like the uh, translator, if you will. It's doing, I'd say, if we put it on a 100-point scale with the server and DAC at 100 points, the server's doing about 70 points, the server's doing about 30 points. Yes, servers are expensive, and what you're paying for a lot of the time is for the software and the amount of development that goes into the software that controls the whole server. But at the end of the day, when it comes to sound, the DAC is truly what's functioning 70% of what you're hearing between the combination of a server and a DAC. Obviously, like this Orander, it has a DAC built into it. Still, 70% is being really driven by that DAC and the other 30, the ser server point. So you could start off with a server that has a built-in DAC. If it's got digital outputs like this Orander, down the road, you could upgrade and put more money into an, another external DAC that's even better than the one that's inside here. Obviously, you'd have to spend a lot of money because this is not a cheap server. And servers, in most cases, aren't cheap, like I said, because of the software implementation and the, and the uh, uh, amount of time that goes into the preparation of creating that software. So, it used to be the source material was like your CD player, your cassette deck a long time ago, reel-to-reels, whatever. But now that things have been broken out, because each time we break out a specific function into a standalone device, each one of those devices that are only doing one function now are much more powerful than all of the devices in one box. So, put your money into the headphones or speakers, and secondary, put your money into the DACs. Obviously, if you're in an analog system, that's a whole other can of worms. We're not going to talk about that today. We're just talking about the digital system. And that's sort of my advice, where to sort of feel out where you're going to put the most money and the best bang for the buck is in those two devices. All right, so stay tuned. Next week, we're going to get into more pieces of the puzzle. Subscribe below, leave us some questions, and we'll get back to you shortly. See you next week.